Hey, everybody. Hello. Welcome to another episode in our 12 Days of Christmas uh, series. We're bringing you a bonus episode every day until Christmas Day. And in this episode, we're going to talk about whether or not they celebrate Christmas in Star Trek. So uh, we're doing kind of a, a some of these episodes are kind of crossovers with our other podcasts. And uh, so I guess you can consider this to be a crossover with that Star Trek podcast and the prime direction in, in, in some aspects that Scott is here. Scott, how's it going? Um, I, I have, I have Jameson <laughs> and Rick is here as well. My really cool deep cut trivia name is hidden by the banner of 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> I can take the banner down. Let's see. Uh, where are my banner? Oh, and no, that's not my banner. But, all right, everyone watching this on YouTube or on Facebook video, watch closely. I'll let, I'll let it that. Any, there we go. <laughs> anyway, <Yeah>. hi, folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sorry, so I'm setting the. Uh, I'm setting it's, the it's not at all timer. late, and we haven't done more than one of these. And um, Merry, <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. I'm setting the 20 minute timer so that we don't overstay our welcome. But okay, so. And I'm out of wine, but I don't really need more right now. There's this thing in Star Trek, it's the future, and they've kind of done away with, as far, at least on Earth, they've kind of done away with most religions. Um, but they still bring up Christmas an awful lot. And I've got uh, uh, instances where Christmas comes up, but... You know, on The Next Generation... They go what what uh oh what you, you stalled out for a second. You froze for a second. Uh oh. Oh uh, okay, I'm I'm here. Yeah. Um <laughs> on the next generation, Data and Picard are big fans of a Christmas Carol. And I know that that's mainly because Patrick but Stewart that's... like did a one man show of, of Christmas Carol for years and years and years. But there's uh, there's also a difference between literature and and celebration. And celebration. However, there is a TOS yeah. reference to Christmas. Because yeah, the, in the episode, what is it? Dagger the, of the Mind. Dagger of the Mind, yeah. Um, which is what what my you know my 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 the, the name might okay. Just just a just a for those of you that are listening and aren't seeing this, uh in StreamYard, the video, you can put whatever name you want and I always mess with the names because that's what I do, you know, <laughs> but um, I have Helen Noel <laughs> rocks in dagger of a Mi dagger of the mind, which was a season one episode. Season one, I think, uh, which was also the episode that introduced the Vulcan mind meld. Um, Kirk beams down to a penal colony. Uh, well, it's, it's actually supposed to be a, 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 an institute for the mental, the criminally insane of which there's like 12 left in the entire Federation or something like that. Uh, and of course, hijinks ensue, but his, he beams down with a doctor by the name of Dr. Helen Noel, who, as you might gather from the name, th th they met at a science section Christmas party. Now the actual uh, uh, the the out of universe story for this is it was originally supposed to be Yeoman Rand, but at that point they had fired Grace Lee Whitney, and so they kind of came up with Helen Noel at the last minute. Uh, but the whole deal was they met at a Christmas party, mm -hmm. yeah. and that was the only mention in TOS of Christmas. Uh, and as far as I know, that was the only mention in tng until generations yeah and generations when when picard goes into the um when he goes into the nexus he comes out and it's christmas which means in my mind that means that christmas has got to be pretty important to picard <laughs> if he's going to a place where it's christmas all the time <laughs> Or he longs for it. He, yeah, he, he, he didn't go to a place where it's Christmas all the time. It just happened to be Christmas because what he wants his his deepest desire, which he never shares with anyone, is the fact that he wants a family. And what time of year, what event, what mm -hmm. celebration 
brings together family more than Christmas. Well, in the 24th century, one would assume that it's something besides Christmas, but because they need to appeal to the 20th century audience, they made it Christmas. Now, all of that can be explained. You know, Christmas, the, the notion of it, the idea of celebrating Christmas, yes, that can endure for another, you know, three, 400 years. I'll buy that. A family getting together and dressing in Dickensian frockery. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. celebrate Christmas. I'm not sure that I buy that in the 24th century. I, I want to create also, a metal band called Dickensian Frockery. It's also the fact that uh, Picard is French, but his ideal Christmas is very British. Very British. <laughs> yeah. It's very British. And he also had like a merry-go-round in his living room. <laughs> um, like hey, you do. <laughs> hey, some kids yeah. get bicycles, some kids get merry-go-rounds, you know. If, it's... if I could afford a place big enough for a carousel, I would have one. Uh, but yeah, when, when trapped in the Nexus in 2371, Captain Picard experienced Christmas complete with a tree, presents, and dinner with his illusory children and wife before being shaken from his reverie and resuming his mission to stop Soren from destroying the Viridian system. Um, also, there's a there's a there's quite a few. Now, a lot of these are references. But you got to think, if this many people are making Christmas references... They can, I mean, I don't make references to holidays that I've never heard of, you know, uh, in, um, the Voyager episode, non sequitur, uh, Tom is telling Harry why he, uh, finally confessed to his, uh, incidents of, uh, pilot error, which killed his shipmates. Tom Paris joked that the ghost of those three dead officers came to me in the middle of the night and told me, taught me the true meaning of Christmas, you know, again, literature. I know. And, uh, and also... Hey, it, I'm just opening the conversation. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, I'm not arguing. I'm just saying that just because you mention something doesn't mean you celebrate it. And, and also... But Q... Q turned the Voyager into a Christmas ornament in Death Wish. He's a bastard. <laughs> and also, what goes alongside all of this is yes, Q is a bastard. And yes, uh, Paris read a book. But at the same time, these are shows that are being made now mm. or whenever they were made. And Christmas is recognizable to the audience. So that's why it gets put put in there. The same reason why uh, crew members on the USS Discovery are using, or, or e even better, why uh, crew members on the La Serena are using slang that didn't exist when TNG was being made. So they didn't use it then. They, they I, use the, the language and the references that the audience understands, which necessitates us head canoning why in in the 20 for very nearly the 25th century, why is a cyberneticist uh, referring to someone wearing a good outfit as you're killing it? <laughs> I doubt people are going to be saying that 10 years from now, let alone centuries from now. Well, you know, also, in uh, in Charlie X, um, Charlie turns like he creates turkeys in the in the in the kitchen. We hear Gene Rod Gene Roddenberry's voice yeah. as the chef come over the radio and say, "But he was cooking. He was cooking Thanksgiving dinner, so he had like real turkeys for Thanksgiving celebration." I, that's what I'm saying. If they're still if they're still celebrating Thanksgiving. Which is a completely American holiday. True. Um, do you not think that they might still be celebrating Christmas? I, I don't doubt it. Uh, yeah. I know people who are completely uh, secular who celebrate Christmas. You're talking about. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not. Um, yeah. I'm not even debating that because, yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's not even part of it because I know there's there's probably more people that are secular that celebrate Christmas than, <laughs> than religious. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go that far <laughs> yet, but uh, you know, uh, uh, Gene Roddenberry think, was. I, was a I, I think there are more people that celebrate it secularly than there are celebrate it religiously. I'll, uh, I'll say that. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. You're right, and I'll guarantee you that there are fewer people who admit that 
than we should. Um, you know, Gene Roddenberry was a a yeah. very uh, out isn't really the right word. He was a very outspoken there. There's the word humanist. Um, he very much put into Star Trek the idea that religion was a symptom of an immature culture. And yet religion kept sneaking into episodes, not necessarily his, his doing. Uh, I know that there's, there's one very uh, famous or infamous uh, instance in uh, who mourns for Adonais where Kirk says to Apollo, uh, we don't need gods anymore. And then the network forced it on Roddenberry for him to add the line. We find the one sufficient. That was not in the original script. That was not something he wanted. The network insisted. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, there was a, there was a line in I I forget the name of the episode the 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 TNG episode that had the lady that was pretend, pretending to be the devil. Um, yeah, I love that episode. So yeah, devils do. Devils do. Yeah. yeah, there was there was a uh, a line in that where Picard basically says the people of Earth, you know, we've put a we've put away these myths a long time ago. Yeah, you know, nobody really believes but, in the devil anymore. And and <laughs> and. Uh, uh, Kronos did the same thing, uh, as Worf put it on DS9. Um, uh, and they, so, someone asked him about, um, you know, like who do, who do Klingons worship, and he said, um, uh, "Our gods were slewn by Klingon warriors a, a millennia ago. They proved more trouble than they were worth." <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Christmas doesn't necessarily need to be religious. I mean. It, okay, before y'all get pissed off, <laughs> if, if Christmas is a religious thing to you, if if you are celebrating the the, the birth of Jesus Christ, groovy, dig it. I, I I understand. Now is that that's you know that's still what the holiday is about. Um, but I can certainly see a future where religion no longer exists, but the December holiday of getting together with family and giving gifts and receiving gifts and having a meal. I could see that continuing through. And I don't see that as a, as a contradiction to the ideals of Star Trek. And some people get very upset mm -hmm. about Christmas appearing in Star Trek. Uh, and I don't, and I'm not particularly, you know, I'm not that into the, the whole religion. You know, we put up a nativity because I have the nativity that my mother put out since I was a baby. Um, mm -hmm. you know, my wife is Baptist if she, you know, and I don't interfere with her. I don't say, you know, no, you know, she wants to read Christmas stories to my daughter. That's fine. I don't have to believe it to allow it to happen because it doesn't harm anything. You know, eventually my daughter will have to decide for herself. And if she ever asks me straight up, I will be honest with her. But, you know, right now she she's digging the mythology and mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. Um, and I don't have a problem with Star Trek. Having Christmas celebrations, I'll, you know, I've I have seen people get really upset about it and I don't understand that you, you can celebrate something without it being. I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now. I you, you can you can enjoy a holiday without having to be absolutely believing in the basis of it. Yeah, you can you can keep the fellowship without the praise and worship. Yeah, yeah. I, I celebrate Halloween every year. As far as you know, I take my I took my grandson trick or treating this year. Uh, we watch it. You know, my wife and my my daughter and I watch a couple of scary movies. We're not <laughs> sacrificing any animals. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not we're not dancing naked in the moonlight or anything like that, you know. Sawin so. is not about sacrificing and it's not about dancing. Careful what you say. <laughs> says the says the non practicing pagan. It's not an evil holiday. Um, but all Hallows Eve is supposed to be when 
the spirits of the dead return and you know a lot mm -hmm. of Christ you know i i my okay no just go on <laughs> i i have, I have known in, in my life, I have known Christians who were so devoted to their religion that that's the reason they did not celebrate Christmas. That's where I was going to go, and I didn't want to go there. <laughs> because, because of the what is generally considered to be uh, the modern-day Christmas season and the modern-day Christmas imagery, because it has roots so deep in old paganism, mm -hmm. they chose not to celebrate it because they thought that what people consider to be Christmas today was was too pagan because it had pagan DNA all the way down to the roots. They didn't celebrate it. Look up Saturnalia, folks. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I've got, I mean, I've got a lot of I got a lot of uh, people that I've known from my childhood that don't, they 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 celebrate Christmas, but they don't celebrate any of the uh, commercialization of Christmas. They don't they don't go see Santa Claus. They don't put up. Christmas decorations that have snowmen and elves and stuff like that. Christmas mm -hmm. is strictly a religious holiday. And if you, and, and, and they believe that you, you are, you are sinning. If you, uh, if you put anything else up that well, doesn't have the nativity or just Jesus or anything like that. But so. he, here's the question. Did, did, did they put up a Christmas tree? Some of them. No, no, there's something I, I did know people that would not put up a Christmas tree. Okay, good. Um, a Christmas wreath or anything having to do with a Yule log? No, oh no. All of those, all of those are, are pagan in origin. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I knew a, uh, and this was a pastor and his wife. And now the entire church didn't do it this way, but he, they wouldn't even do gifts. They wouldn't even pass out gifts to each other. They would have a Christmas dinner and they would sing some songs and things like that but it was it was not what you think of as christmas they they didn't do yeah you need so. to title this episode a very pagan christmas yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't think this is where this was supposed to go but <laughs> hey, yeah i'm not this one that we record that we recorded tonight and the one we recorded the next, last week i'm not gonna put them back to back <laughs> we're going to some territory um, well, we actually had this conversation with my daughter last night at dinner, believe it or not. Um, I don't re I, I don't remember what she asked, but we were talking about how uh, when Christianity really took hold in Europe. Because uh, because we were talking about how historically. All right, let's let's get some email. What the hell? Historically, if there was an actual person uh, named Jesus or Yeshua or Joshua or whatever, um, he was probably born in August. But because there were a lot of pagan holiday or rituals that mm -hmm. centered around the end of December, because that was the 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 end of the you know it was the solstice and yeah that, and that, that was it like was that. yule that it, was it when was yule, yule and there was That's also yule was. saturnalia was a Ro was the roman incredibly fun if <laughs> offensive by christian terms uh holiday at the end of december <laughs> the uh the, the the christian the the newly born christian church uh took december 25th and uh and assimilated it for lack of a better term and decided we'll call that christmas and until about 100 150 years ago christmas was a minor holiday in the christian calendar easter was the big deal yeah which makes a whole lot more sense um but after the industrial revolution um somebody figured out Christmas was a great opportunity to make some money. Pardon yeah. my cynicism, but that, you know, when they realized that Christmas was a great excuse to get people to buy stuff for people for each other. Uh, I, it, it was, it was a relatively quick thing where Christmas became the big thing every, uh, you know, of the year and Easter kind of took a backseat to it. Yeah. 
What what's the what are we talking about on this show? We were talking we were talking about Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, kind of, I kind of thought we had drifted a bit. From our... the, 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 the short answer is, yeah, they probably celebrate Christmas in, in Star Trek, but it's not as big of a deal as it is now. It's yeah, and it's it's more commonly known as Peldor Joy. Um, <laughs> I remember them trying to do like a Christmas episode. They tried to do like a Christmas episode of Xena. But how do you do a Christmas episode of a show before Jesus that takes place before Jesus was even born? Uh, They actually did a couple of them. And there was one where at the end of the episode, uh, Zena and Gabrielle are walking and they and they come across a a man and a pregnant woman with a donkey (laughs) going the other way. (laughs) And then there was the other one where they uh, they meet a toy maker named Centicles. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know i i am not a fan of ray bradbury's work for the most part um not that i don't think he was a great storyteller but i just never liked his his writing style but he wrote i, I do like a lot of his short stories and he wrote one short story and i can't remember the name of it but the story was a a, a man builds a time machine and he his his the first thing he wants to do with the time machine is go back in time and meet Jesus. And so he sets the time machine to go back to ancient Jerusalem and he learns yes. the language, you know, and he, he, he prepares before he goes. And when he gets there, he crashes and the time machine is destroyed. So he's stuck there and he's going around and he's trying to find Jesus of Nazareth. And he's, you know, he's going up to people and he's saying, do you know Jesus? And they're like, hmm? and he's like, you know, the guy that said this, the guy that said that, the guy that says this, the guy that says that. And eventually he is, he, he wanders the land spreading the teachings of Jesus. In search he, of Jesus. In search of Jesus. And then he finally finds Joseph and Mary and their autistic son. Oh. But by this point, he's attracted the attention of, of the Pharisees and the ruling people, and he ends up getting crucified because he was saying all of this stuff. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I know of the story. I can't remember the title of it either, but I, yeah, I know the story. Did. Yeah, I don't you know. remember that one. I have to go back and find that. All right. Well, that's. Uh, I mean, that's it. That's all I had for this episode. But um, we're gonna come back. Uh, the 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 we're gonna do a, a few more of these. We're gonna do a crossover with. Um, Wait, you've never seen. I think we're going to watch Christmas in Connecticut and Virginia's going to come on and we're going to talk about that movie a little bit. We're also going to do a crossover with Captain Game Show. John's going to come on. He's going to have a Christmas themed episode of Captain Game Show for us to to play out. And uh, and of course, we're going to do the, our Star Wars holiday special viewing, which uh, which, by the way, if you haven't watched the new Star Wars holiday special, it's pretty good. It's a lot of fun. It has nothing to do with Christmas at all, but <laughs> well, neither did the first one. <laughs> nah, that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Life and, Day. <laughs> and, and speaking of those Christmas specials, if you haven't seen Zena, she's right here. <laughs> Hi, Grudge. All right. Zena. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and we and uh, come back tomorrow. There'll be a new one of these. <laughs>